Hey guys, I'm Carl Kappas. I'm your realtor guy with a bow tie. And today I'm coming to you because with the market being as hectic as it is, if you're thinking about buying a home, you have a good idea of what you're getting into. If you're selling a home, you have a good idea of what's probably gonna happen. But the thing is, you gotta figure out who's going to get you to that finish line. Today, I'm gonna tell you what you need to consider when you're trying to figure out who to hire to list and sell your home. So guys, it was kind of like I was listening to the Super Bowl halftime show and everybody knows that iconic piano beat that Dre did at the beginning. And when I heard that, I instantly knew exactly who it was who was doing it. And when it comes to real estate, I hope that my clients think of me as that beat. That they think real estate, they think Carl. But one of the things that I've learned is that a lot of people are getting caught up in I have this friend who just got licensed and I want to use them because we're friends. And today I want to talk to you a little bit about what you need to be asking people if you're going to give them the opportunity to sell the biggest asset you have in many cases. I mean, you got to remember in this market, I've got plenty of sellers who are walking away with six figures at the end of the day and they're paying someone sometimes four and five figures to get that job done. You have to make sure that you're getting your money's worth and that you're gonna be in a good position when it comes time to sell that house. So the first thing you have to do is look at the experience of the agent, not just from the number of years, but how many transactions. And the reason I bring that up is because someone who's been in the game for 10 years and has only sold a few houses, they've got some experience, don't get me wrong, they've seen a little bit of high and low. Someone though who has done several hundred transactions is now not just bringing the years to the table, they're bringing the transactions and past experience to the table to show you, hey, if this issue pops up, I know how we're gonna deal with it. This is gonna be easy. Oh, I ran into this before. This isn't gonna be a problem. Having that little bit of peace of mind knowing that somebody has already possibly gone through it once, if not a dozen times, is a lot better than someone standing there going, um, let me call somebody. Let me call somebody, let me call somebody. Because you want the best answer possible and you want the most expert advice and I think that that's why you need to hire them up front. Which leads me into my next part of, is the agent, is this their full-time focus? Are they a dedicated only a listing agent? Are they dedicated to only working with buyers? Are they splitting time with both? The reason I bring that up is because I'm a firm believer that a good agent has experience on both sides of the table in today's market. They know what the buyers are looking for, they know what the sellers need to have happen, and they know the hiccups that can come into play. But if they're not full time, they're not fully invested. They need to be somebody who is literally eating, breathing, waking up to this market, because that way I can educate a seller as to what I'm seeing. Which leads me into my next point of, when I'm meeting with a seller to talk about what their house is, and how much are we going to get for it, and how long is it going to take to sell, we're talking about other things. What are the shortcomings of your home? Are they able to be honest with you and say, hey look, you've got a beautiful home, but this and this may keep you from being able to sell as quickly as we'd like. Do you wanna handle that now? Or do you wanna take some money off later? Or how do you want to address this? Those are the questions I'm asking a seller because I want the best for them at the end of the day. And if I'm not able to have that kind of open communication up front, How am I gonna be able to openly communicate with them when we're negotiating, when we're dealing with inspection issues, when we're dealing with potential appraisal issues even? Like you need someone who is going to be knowledgeable and able to walk you through all of it. Now, like I said before, you have to look at, do they have an understanding of the buyers in this market? Because I can tell you, in the 12 months past alone, I have already seen a change in the buyer's mentality. Back when COVID first started, we'll talk about like early 2020, mid 2020, buyers were buying houses just to buy houses. They didn't care what kind of condition it was in. They didn't care what price it was. They just wanted a house because they were figuring if we're going to be stuck at home, let's be stuck at home in a new house. Even if it's not the one we're in or it's not the best thing in the world, at least we're in it. But now we're starting to see where buyers are actually pulling back a little bit. No, I'm not going to go ahead and throw a bunch of money at this house just because it's a house. I want something that's maybe a little bit more move-in condition. Maybe it has the bigger yard that I wanted. Maybe it does have this that a year, year and a half, two years ago, buyers were just overlooking. 
they're not doing that anymore. And I've learned that from dealing with my personal buyers and seeing how all this unfolds because it's really funny when you have a buyer, you're like, man, I don't think this is a good fit for you. It's got all these problems. And they're like, I don't care. Today they're going, hey, this does have a bunch of problems and I do care. Being able to translate that information to a seller so that they can understand what that means for their home and their sale is imperative in this market. I also want you to take and look at their reviews. Have they had positive reviews and negative reviews? I'm sorry, if somebody doesn't have at least one negative review on their website, I can tell you right this minute, either it's been doctored or it's been removed and that's not good. I'm a firm believer that you need open and understanding about what your agent is going to deliver good and bad. I can tell you, if you look at my Zillow reviews, there are like 125 of them, you're going to see there's two bad reviews in there. And each one of them, I thanked this, the client for posting what they did because it did two things. It showed people I'm a real human. I'm capable of making mistakes just like anyone else. But it also gave me an opportunity to learn where there was a flaw in my business that will be a better experience for someone else going forward. So make sure you pay attention to those reviews. Now, also, very similar to what I was talking about with buyers, what does their marketing approach look like? If you sit down with someone and say, hey, how are you gonna sell my house? I can literally put my checklist in front of you and say, this is what you can expect, this is when you can expect it, these are the things I'm going to do. And you're gonna be able to look at that list and compare it to what you've heard from other agents. The key point about it though is that they handed it to you and you're able to pick off, are there things on this list that someone else wasn't going to do because they don't do it unless you ask for it. I can tell you my checklist has got so many points on it and I'm upfront about telling my clients this is what you can expect when you can expect it and it happens in a certain time frame because when it happens they realize I'm a man of my word. That you have to be able to trust the person and make sure that they're going to do what they say they're going to do. If I give you my checklist in writing you'll see this is what it is. Now going from that it's very similar when you're hiring a buyer agent. You have to make sure that you're looking at does their personality fit what you need. Now when I say that, I have a very strong personality sometimes. I am not there to be super friendly and bubbly and all that kind of stuff. I'm here to do one job and that's to give you the best opportunity to sell your home for the most money possible. If I'm sitting here trying to figure out when we're going to go out for tea and drinks and things of that caliber, I'm not actively working on selling your home. I want to be friends after the closing because I did a good job, not because you signed a contract with me to sell your home. So make sure that you're talking about how the client is going to work, how the agent is going to work, and understanding both sides that if you have a personality clash with that agent, it's not going to lead to a positive result even if you do get to the closing table. Another big point, and I was joking with a seller about this today, is who does the pictures? And I know this sounds super minute. It's like, well, it's just pictures. I got to make sure I got good pictures of my house. You won't believe how many agents in our greater Cincinnati area, when you go to list your home with them, they go and they're like, here, I'll get the pictures done right now. And you're like, great. They're going to pull out a Canon DSLR that's going to have, you know, ultra big lens on it and everything else. And you know what they're going to do? They reach in their pocket, they pull out their cell phone, and then you start clicking away. And I can tell you, looking at some of these listings, I can tell who's using an iPhone, who's going to the wide angle setting on the Android, and just popping the pictures there because it's more time uh, advantageous for them. They want to get it on the market as soon as possible. I have a professional photographer for a reason. She does a great job. She portrays my listings in the best light possible and I pay for it because my job is to make sure that your house looks as good as possible. Now, can I pull my phone out and start taking pictures? Yeah. Is that going to do you any good? In my opinion, I think a day or two to wait for a photographer is more important because they're bringing in the right equipment to do the best job possible, which is what you're hiring the agent to do, right? So going off of that, once we have the pictures and we have the marketing in place, you want to talk with them about how are they going to handle the showings on your house. There are agents out there who will just say, give me a revolving door, let me do what I want. Other agents like me will take and say, hey, is there anything that's going to affect your ability to show the home? Like maybe a kid who's on a sleep schedule, maybe a seller who works from home and cannot be disturbed during certain hours of the day. These things are very important because my job is to sell your house, but it's also not to disrupt your life to a point where everything's out of whack for three months and you don't know what the hell's going on. So make sure you talk with your agent about the schedules of your household and how it's going to affect the showings going forward. 
Lastly, what is their availability? I'm sorry, if an agent takes more than a day to call you back while you're getting ready to list, do you really think that person's gonna be as attentive to your needs while you're actually listed? I mean, my firm belief is a text message means get to it when you can. An email says, I have no urgency for the most part. A phone call says, I need to talk to you like now. Now it may not be something I have to call you back in five minutes, but I'm gonna call you back probably in the next hour or two depending upon the schedule because you took the time to make that call. Something was important. Your, my availability to you is very important to me and making sure that you have the attention you need because if you have a question or you have a concern, I want to address it sooner than later so that that way you're not stuck wondering who's on first. Like I said, hiring an agent in this market is not the easiest thing to do. I don't think any client should take it lightly. So that's why I've given you these bullet points so that when you're trying to figure out how am I going to get this done and who am I going to hire to sell the biggest asset I probably will ever have, you'll know by asking a lot of these questions that you've got the right person for the job. Hey guys, I'm Carl Kappas. I'm the realtor guy with the bow tie. I've dedicated my entire career to giving people great service and also at the same time making sure they're learning about what they're doing, not that they just woke up one day and decided to sell their house or buy our new home. So if you've enjoyed this material, hopefully you'll take and you'll click the subscribe button. And if you know somebody who's thinking about buying or selling who may find this information useful, please feel free to forward the link over to them or have them reach out to me directly. I'm available via text, email, DM, anytime, any day. And make sure you follow us on our social media at Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and here on YouTube. I hope everyone has a great day and tune in next week.